Speaking of Barack Obama, you slipped in one of your columns uh, a connection between Barack Obama and uh, the other, uh, one of the other loves in your life. I'll read it. We know that Barack Obama is neither a Philistine nor a dull writer and could perhaps come to understand how democracy functions in artistic action in a jazz, jazz ensemble because the whole point of jazz in improvising is e pluribus unum. Right. right. Well, explain, explain that. that. Well, you know, in, 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 a, in a jazz band, because it's improvised, you, everybody relies on everybody else. So in a certain sense, if you're playing and you come up with a, a series of ideas and everybody in the band goes your way, then in a sense they vote for your aesthetic decisions at that moment. If somebody else takes it over, you vote for them. So what I mean is that you have this ongoing, on the, on the, on the, in the moment set of decisions within a form that have a, 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 a set of aesthetic goals that are sometimes determined in motion and are sometimes determined beforehand. Now that's, that's, that's about as close artistically as you can get to the Constitution and the, and the whole idea of amendments, the making of laws, the passages of laws, the changings of laws, the improvements of laws. All of those things are very similar to what happens in a jazz band. Now, Barack Obama is clearly intelligent enough to understand jazz. The question, though, is whether he has enough taste to understand it. There's not intelligence. He doesn't have a problem with it. He has no problem with intelligence. I doubt that there's been anybody, maybe since 1900, who's, 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 who, 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 whom you could actually say is innately smarter than he is. But I don't think that, but see, that doesn't have anything to do with, with art. You know, what I mean is you either have taste or you don't have it. You have a taste for something or you don't have a taste for something. See, I think that Barack Obama's a rhythm and blues guy. And that's just how it goes, you know. Now one day he might wake up and look out the window and realize that he and Louis Armstrong were born on the same day, and that must mean something. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when he, if it hits him, it'll be good for the country and good for the music. It's probably a good place to segue and do another one of your favorite subjects. I actually have a friend who used to have two birds. One was named Charlie. <laughs> this is serious. And the other was named Parker. Right, right. right. And, and I always, I, I wondered why, and because they were big fans of Charlie Parker, and you know why I'm asking you that. Oh yes, well, I mean, well. You've been working on a, a biography of Charlie Parker since 1982? Yes, yes so, that's true. And when's it coming out? Well, the, volume one. Should be out within the next year. And who was he? Well, he was um, a person who was perplexing to many people who had to deal with him because he he was uh, given to a, a disruptive, self-destructive appetites, and he was a basically very irresponsible person. But I mean, what did he do? Well. He added another style to, to, to jazz, and he also could play. I mean, he, he was a perfect musician. It's, it's that simple. What instrument? He, he played, played the alto saxophone, and as John Lewis, the leader of the modern jazz quartet, once said about him, he said he was perfect. If you wrote some music, he could play it. If you wanted to play it in tune, he could play it in tune. If it was difficult to play, he could play it. When, when did he, he live? He lived from 1920 to 1955. Did you ever know him? Nope. I, I might have seen him, but I, I don't recall it. And why do you want to write a book, or why have you spent all these years writing a biography of him? Well, he's a fascinating guy, and, 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 and those years that he lived were extremely in, interesting and important years in American life. And I think that he represents a, the, the tension between narcissistic irresponsibility and aesthetic clarity because he was a 
his sense of order as a player was so overwhelmingly uh, um, effective, but he just was kind of a wild person. You know, some political columnists write about politics most of the time, then they always throw in their baseball column. Right. You write about politics, and then you always throw in your jazz column. I guess that makes me a variation on them, huh? <laughs>